Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at the locate command. The locate command helps us, well, locate stuff. It helps us locate files in our Linux file system. And it's very useful if you don't know exactly where something might be. And this video is part of my Linux Crash Course series. This series is over 60 episodes long and counting. There's all kinds of Linux related knowledge in the playlist for this series. So definitely check it out and learn more Linux even beyond what you learn in this video. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into the locate command. So let's do exactly that. All right, so here we are on my handy dandy Linux terminal. Let's get started. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is see if we have the locate command available. And I don't. Now this command may or may not be installed by default on your distribution. So we might need to install it. Now the way we go about installing this package is done in one of two ways. Either we're going to install the mlocate package or we're going to install the plocate package. It really doesn't matter which one you install because either of these packages will provide you with the locate command. It's not going to be exactly the same, but for the most part it is. Basically what's happening is mlocate, which is the package that provided the locate command, up until more recently, that's being deprecated in favor of plocate. So what you'll do is try to install the plocate package. If you don't have it, it might be mlocate. In the case of Ubuntu and Debian, you can run sudo apt install and then plocate just like that. So that's what I'll do. I'll type in my super secret password, preferably correctly, and I'll press enter. And it's installed. So I installed the plocate package. And that provided me with a locate command. Now again, if I installed the mlocate package, I would also end up with a locate command. It's a little bit different, but for the most part, it's the same. Most distributions are either going to have mlocate available or plocate available. But anyway, I'll just let you know anytime something comes up that's different between the two. Now the basic usage of the locate command looks something like this. Let's say, for example, I wanted to find filename.txt. Now let's also assume I have no idea where it is. I know that I have a file named this on the file system. I want to find it, but I have no idea where to start looking. Now also notice that right now I'm currently inside my home directory. So if I run a command similar to this, notice that I'm not giving it a path. I'm just telling it to find filename.txt. I'm not telling it where to look. I'm just telling it to find it. And that makes sense. I don't even know where to look. So, so I can't tell the locate command where to start looking if I don't even know. And that's one of the benefits of the locate command. You don't have to tell it where to look, but how does it know where to look? Well, the way that it works, the locate command has a database. We'll get into that shortly, but if you're curious for now, just understand that there is a database and that's how we're able to search for files without typing the path. That also means that if filename.txt is located somewhere earlier in the file system, even though I'm in my home directory, if it was, you know, in a different directory, even underneath that, it would still find it. Anyway, I don't have a file named filename.txt on my system, but I do have one named sshd underscore config. I know that's in the Etsy SSH directory. I just decided to pick that as an example because I know that it's here. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, it's showing me a list right here, a list of files and directories that include sshd underscore config. So as you can see, the command does indeed work. Now let's take a moment and talk about that database. Obviously you're going to be adding files to your system every now and then. I have no idea when you're going to do that. So you don't want to have to rescan your file system every single time, but every now and then you do have to run update DB to update the database. Now, if your distribution ships plocate or mlocate, that can make this different. But this command right here is how you tell it to update the database of files in your system. Now, for me, it's telling me that permission is denied. So let's just rerun that command with sudo. And as you can see, it updated the database. It doesn't really show you all that much, but every now and then you might want to run update db like I just did to update the database. And that's one of the downsides of the locate command, actually. 
the results might not be all that accurate. Meaning if you've saved a file and that file has not been added to the database or the database has not been updated yet, it's possible that it might not show results even when the file is there. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to take a moment and let you know that I have a brand new course available, this time covering Ansible. My new 20 episode course covers all the basics of Ansible, such as entering commands, writing playbooks, refactoring plays into roles, encrypting and decrypting files, and much more. The course is full of hands-on examples to keep you engaged, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to use Ansible in your daily workflow. In fact, I'll even cover lesser known features, such as Ansible Pull. On the screen right now is a URL you could use to go directly to the course and start learning Ansible. In each lesson, I'll break down each component into easy to understand explanations, and along the way, you'll get real experience with Ansible. In fact, with over 20 years of experience in the industry, you'll be learning Ansible the way that is actually used in real data centers. For example, I'll also teach you the basics of version control along with Ansible during this course, since it's very common that the two will be used together. So, check out my course and learn Ansible. You won't regret it. Now, let's get back to the video. So, just keep in mind every now and then, run update DB. If your system uses the plocate package, then there's a cron job that's going to update that periodically for you, which is pretty cool. Anyway, the locate command is fairly simple. All you do is type locate and then what you're looking for. But there's a few more options though that we should give it. So for example, if I was going to find this particular file again, the same one as earlier, but let's just say for example, I typed it in all caps for some reason. Now obviously it's not going to find this particular file, at least not the one I'm looking for. So I don't have that file in all caps, so it's not going to find it. So for that reason, what I could do is give you the case insensitive option, dash I, as you see here, check this out. Dash I activates case insensitive mode, and that's very helpful if I don't know the case of the file. I might know how it's spelled, but I don't know, is it camel case? Is it uppercase, lowercase? If I don't know, then I could use dash I to avoid even caring about whether or not anything is uppercase or lowercase. I could also use globbing or an asterisk in this case to find files that meet a particular criteria. For example, star.conf, what that's going to do is give me every file that locate is aware of that ends in .conf. As you can see, every line here ends in .conf. So I was able to find every file on my file system, at least in terms of what the locate command understands, is on my system. Now I'll give you another example of the locate command, but this one is going to be different depending on if your distribution ships mlocate or plocate. So when it comes to the locate command, we have the dash n option. But anyway, what this option does is it allows you to limit the output by a certain number of lines. Now, if your distribution ships plocate, this particular command right here does not work. Instead, you could pipe this into head or tail if you wanted to do that. I have a video that covers the head and tail commands if you want to check that out. So we don't have the dash n option here, but yours might. You might have that option, and if you do, it'll let you limit your output by a certain number of lines. Now, another option, for example, we have this one right here. That's going to give us everything that ends in .conf. However, if I add the dash C option, watch what happens. It shows me how many files it found without showing me the names of the files. How cool is that? Another option that you might want to be aware of, and this is for those of you that are using mlocate or those of you that are running a distribution that uses mlocate, you'll have access to the dash Q option. And then you give it a search term. That's going to suppress errors. But that option is not understood by plocate though. As you can see, it's an invalid option. Now I know it's confusing that we have two different versions of locate, but all you have to know is how you search for files because that's what you use it for. Locate, and then whatever your particular search term is, it could be a file name if you know it. It could be part of the name if you only know part of the name. And every now and then, you might have to run sudo and then update db to update the database. But anyway, if you're looking for a way to search for files in your system and you find the find command a little bit too overwhelming, well, now you know the locate command. And there you go. Yet another episode of the Linux Crash Course series has come to a close. Now, sure, the locate command is one of the easier commands, so I think this is going to be edited down to be one of the shorter videos in the series, but every now and then, some of the commands that we will learn when it comes to Linux are going to be super easy, 
Some commands won't have all that many options, so some of the videos in this series aren't going to be quite short. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button to let YouTube know that you liked this video. That would be very helpful. But in the meantime, subscribe if you haven't already done so, because I have some awesome content coming very soon that I can't wait to show you, and I'll see you as soon as I have those videos uploaded.